Okay, so recently I've covered quite a few of these just wonderfully wholesome stop-motion movies for children, TM. Like James the Giant Peach. We'll just take him. And the peach. Back to our cozy little house on the hill. Come along. No, I'm not. Or Corpse Bride. I should be with you always. Victor, I feel the same. Of course, that classic kids movie, Coraline. Point. He pulled a long face. And mother didn't like it. <laughs> but probably the most famous of any of these movies, despite being 30 years old this year, is The Nightmare Before Christmas. I mean, let me tell you, even back when I was in high school, this movie was the entire personality of like every alt emo girl you'd ever see. Also, it was the best part of every Kingdom Hearts game, even though they made us play through the same exact thing like six times. But it was cool, okay? Are those strange looking fellows in the town square with you? Huh? What fellows? You know, the ones who wanted to spoil Halloween and Christmas? Huh? For Halloween, I did a video on Corpse Bride, so to round out the holiday season, I figured, why not finally give Nightmare Before Christmas a shot? I mean, is it a Halloween movie? Is it a Christmas movie? The answer is Halloween movie, actually, but it has Christmas in the title, so I'm going for it. Come along, kids. Let's take a walk. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Scentbird. If you ever find yourself making a stop-motion claymation movie that's gonna give children the worst nightmares they've ever had, you might as well smell good while you do it, am I right? Well, Scentbird can help you with that. Scentbird is a service that's reimagining everything about how people discover, shop for, buy, and experience fragrances. For about $17 a month, you get to try new luxury brand fragrances of your choosing, from Tom Ford to Gucci, and they even have more niche brands like Heretic and Skylar, and tons more, more than I could ever list here. All you gotta do is sign up using my code, Myers, and you're gonna get 55% off your first month, so that means it's only like seven bucks, and then you get to pick which luxury fragrance you want, or answer some questions, and discover new brands of fragrances you might have never found otherwise. Scentbird sent me three different different fragrances in these cool bottles they have that actually have quite a lot in them, okay? The tubes they send you have about 30 days worth of uses, so you really get to try out the scents and see like how you actually feel about them. So these three are the ones they sent me, and all of them are pretty much exactly the kinds of scents I personally would actually wear. The Aqua de Parma Peonia Nobile one is pretty elegantly scented, I think. So I think it'd be good if you're going somewhere more like sophisticated and highbrow, you know, like Discovery Zone. Then there's the Boho Boca one, which is a really interesting combination of like the smooth sweetness of vanilla, but then there's the sharpness of black pepper. I don't think I've ever experienced anything quite like this. It's pretty unique, to me at least. And finally, I got the Perfumer Story, which compared to the other ones is a lot more subdued and almost kind of like a little secret that you'd have that someone could only figure out if they were just like right in your face, you know? So if you want to start getting into fragrances or you just want to try out some new luxury scents to add to your collection, click my link down below and use the code Myers55 and you're going to get 55% off your first month. Now, this is only available in the US and Canada right now, but still, if you're interested, check it out. Okay, back to the show. The movie starts off with our main character, Jack Skellington, aka the Pumpkin King. And every Every year in Halloween Town, <clears throat> not that one, Jack and his Halloween buddies do Halloween stuff, whatever that means. Wasn't it terrifying? What a night! Great Halloween, everybody! I believe it was our most horrible yet! And believe me when I tell you that every lady in this town is so hot and bothered for this dude. I mean, tall, lanky, prominent Adam's apple? Who wouldn't want to be totally ignored by this guy at a homecoming football game, you know? Thank you, everyone! No, thanks to you, Jack. Without your brilliant leadership. Not at all, Mayor. You're such a scream, Jack. You're a witch's fondest dream. Ooh, Jack. You make wounds ooze and flesh crawl. Thank you. <laughs> You know, this, this is not too dissimilar from how I used to flirt with the girls I liked. You know, if you were my girlfriend, I wouldn't even care about your nasty morning breath. I'd kiss you every day and not even throw up in my mouth or nothing. Yippee. Now, someone else who has a big old crush on Jack Skellington is every girl with this hair, but also this girl over here, Sally. Now, Sally is some kind of Frankenstein monster kind of thing who was created by this guy, the evil Dr. Finkelstein. Well, he's not actually evil per se. He's just kind of uggo. Let go. You're not ready for so much excitement. Yes, I am. You're coming with me. No, I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, that's not terrifying. You see, the doctor wants to keep her all cooped up in his lab forever, but she just wants to be a normal person and live a normal life, you know? Where you spend at least two thirds of every day being like, oh, gotta do laundry. Oh, there's more laundry. Can't forget to change the laundry. Gotta put away the dishes. Oops, I made more dishes. Also, she has like the tiniest hands I've ever seen. I mean, look at this little butt. So anyway, Sally runs away from the doctor to find Jack Skellington singing to himself about how he's just too good at Halloween and now he's bored of it and wants to try something new. Nice work, Bone Daddy. <laughs> 
I, I don't even know what that means. Year after year, it's the same routine, and I grow so weary of the sound of screams. No, Zero, not now. I'm not in the mood. So Jack wanders off with his ghost dog Zero and he kind of like walks through the forest literally all night and comes to this mysterious grove place where there's all these trees with weird looking doors on them. And as you've probably already figured out because you're very smart, these trees lead to all the other holiday worlds like Christmas, Halloween, Valentine's Day, etc. Whoa! So after falling into this mysterious door, Jack is completely blown away by this Christmas town world place thing. I mean, there's snow, there's bright lights, there's there's gift cards that people think is too impersonal, but actually is the best gift. What's this? There's children throwing snowballs instead of throwing heads. The busy building toys and absolutely no one's dead. Well, that's how you know it's definitely a boring Christmas party. So anyway, after sneaking around this place for a while, Jack realizes that this is what he's been looking for. He was bored of Halloween. He wanted something new. Bam! Is, is Kermis. So he rushes back to Halloween Town to tell everyone what he found and that the next Halloween thing they're gonna do next year is gonna be so crazy, guys. You don't even know. Now that night, Jack tries to explain Christmas to the whole town, but like, they don't really get it, you know? Pick up an oversized sock and hang it like this on the wall. Oh yes, does it still have a foot? Let me see, let me look. Is it rotted and covered with gook? Um, let me explain. Cause I mean, come on, this world's full of like, a uh, snot monster. Uh, there's a dude whose head is connected by his uvula. And of course, every kid's favorite character, a lynching tree. <laughs> oh my god, what? I'm sorry, just, what a wonderfully wholesome children's movie, am I right? Now, while this is all happening, Sally's back at the lab with Dr. Finkelstein, who's kind of upset that she used poison in his soup, which, like, I don't know where he'd get an idea like that, but hey, what you gonna do? That soup ready yet? <laughs> Coming! <laughs> Why do they gotta use the worst sound effects in these movies? Now, long story short, Sally ends up poisoning the doctor again so she can escape and give a present to Jack, I guess. But then she runs away at the last second because she's just too embarrassed. Like like me when I'd write a note to my crush, put it in her locker, and then, oh, she's gonna fall in love with me for sure this time. You have a face and it's good. I like you more than SpaghettiOs, with meatballs even. I can't wait to run into you at our 10 year reunion after you've mostly given up on life and finally give me a chance. Wow, excuse me everybody, I gotta go break up with my boyfriend right away. Now while Sally's sitting on the ground out of Jack's view, this happens. Now, apparently we're supposed to interpret this as Sally having a vision of the future, which I did not get from watching that, but sure, yeah, okay, if you say so. And so Sally tries to warn Jack that his plans for turning Halloween into Christmas is gonna end up like kinda bad or whatever, but Jack, of course, he's way too into his ideas to even listen to her. Which to be fair, the conversation kinda goes like, well, hello there, Sally, you are the most normal, trustworthy person in this town. Yes, hello, you have to stop all this because last night I picked up a flower and it turned into a Christmas tree and then exploded. This is a major plot point of the movie, but whatever, Jack doesn't listen or care because he's too busy trying to get the last thing he needs for his master plan. Halloween's finest trick or treaters. The job I have for you is top secret. Leave that no account boogie boogie out of this. Whatever you say, Jack. <laughs> Oh, they cross their fingers! That means they're telling a fib! So the super secret job for these kids to do is that Jack wants them to kidnap Santa Claus. So Christmas will be canceled and then Jack can become Santa Claus, save Christmas by giving kids all the toys that Halloween Town's been making this whole time. Yeah, you know, they got some real banger toys over there, like a dead rat carcass hat and a dead cat jack in the box. <laughs> or this. Making Christmas. Making Christmas. Making Christmas. Making Christmas. 
Just in time for the holidays, it's French Revolution Barbie. Anyway, so the three kids manage to kidnap Santa Claus from Christmas land, and they take him to their master dad legal guardian, Oogie Boogie. And so, thanks to all this, Jack can finally take over Christmas for himself. So, like, slight tangent here, but is Jack the villain of this movie? I mean, he discovers Christmas exists, and then immediately sets out to stop them from doing it so he can do it himself, including kidnapping Santa Claus from his house by using, like, three psychopath kids. <laughs> I feel like there's really no good guy in this movie. I mean, Sally, I guess, maybe. Because, like, before I watched this movie back again, I remembered Oogie Boogie being, like, the villain or whatever, right? But, like, Jack is even worse? I mean, Oogie Boogie doesn't even do anything bad in this movie. But whatever. Anyway, so after getting all the presents made and having Dr. Finkelstein make these dead reindeer thing that can fly, Jack sets off to give all the wonderful toys to the kids of the world. <laughs> And what did Santa bring you, honey? <laughs> I can't even... <laughs> this movie is so insane. And while this is all happening, Sally sets off to save Santa Claus, but she also gets caught by Ugnelius Boogington because she, like, breaks into his house, right? So, like, what is Boogie supposed to do? Although I do love the part when she breaks into Oogie's place. <laughs> What have we here? <laughs> Lovely. Tickle, tickle, tickle. <laughs> what? What? What is even happening right now? But like, seriously though, he has no idea what's happening right now. He's just doing the thing that everyone in town does anyway. <laughs> Well, well, well. What have we here? Santa Claus, ha! Huh? Ooh, I'm really scared. So you're the one everybody's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> So, th so this dude was talking, and the maggots fell out of his mouth and crawled into Santa's beard. <laughs> What the heck is this kid's movie? But anyway, back in the human world, eventually people start to realize that this new Santa Claus is an imposter and he's delivering these horrible toys to kids. And worst of all, he's ruining Christmas! You can, ma'am. Police, I know, I know, a skeleton. Keep calm. Turn off all the lights. Make sure the doors are locked. Hello, police. Reports are pouring in from all over the globe that an imposter is shamelessly impersonating Santa Claus. And so, like, eventually the military gets involved and shoots surface-to-air missiles at Jack to blow him out of the sky. I know I've seen this movie before like years ago and I don't remember any of this. Anyway, now that Jack's been completely blown up, his reindeer just shattered everywhere, he starts to wonder if like, was he maybe kind of the bad guy here? What have I done? What have I done? All this loss. Where was I? Spoiled all. Hmm, maybe I shouldn't have tortured Santa Claus and stolen his job from him because I was bored. Huh, yeah, you know, maybe should have thought about this for more than like seven seconds. And so the end of the movie is Jack going back to Halloween Town and he learns that Santa's being held by Oogie Boogie. So he runs over there to fight him and save Santa and also save Sally because she's there too. You know, and save them all from the bad guy of the movie. <laughs> oh, Jack! How dare you treat my friend so shamefully! Now look what you done! <laughs> no, no, nope, nope, stop. <laughs> what? This, nope. <laughs> this is, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Who thought this was okay? And so in the end, Jack saves Christmas after he ruined it himself anyway, and Santa flies up through the chimney pipe like this. Oh, I hope there's still time to fix Christmas. Of course there is. I'm Santa Claus. And then Jack and Sally make out because they're in love, I guess. <laughs> Even though they literally only had one conversation, which was about Sally's weird Christmas hallucination. Yeah, so uh, I was sitting on the ground and I saw a flower turn into a Christmas tree and then explode into fire. Well, shoot, this is the girl for me. But all the same, that's pretty much the end of the movie, so. 
What? I will say though, the movie still has one of the best, like most unique aesthetics of any movie, really. I mean, this whole thing's been done many times since. You got like Corpse Bride, Coraline, Series of Unfortunate Events, like not even just Tim Burton stuff. Like a lot of people have been kind of borrowing from this kind of look. But even going all the way back to 1993, like the look of this movie holds up really well. It's also kind of depressing to watch this movie though, because like Disney today would never make a movie like this. I mean, the movie's insane. It's disgusting. It's horrifying. It doesn't even make much sense at all, but it's just so cool, you know? Like I hate this word, but it really is just like, Vibes, the movie. There has been some talk recently of doing like a sequel or a prequel or something, but like, please, please, please no, okay? This is perfectly fine the way it is. I'm begging you, don't do anything. Hey, also, don't forget to use my link and code Myers55 for 55% off your first month of Scentbird. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please watch another one because that's how the algorithm works. So click on this one that's being recommended to you right now, right here on the screen. It actually helps a lot if you do that because like that's how YouTube knows that my videos are worth caring about. Also, if you have any movies or TV shows you'd like to recommend, send me an email at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com and I'll put them on my absurdly long list of movies that I need to get to at some point. Anyway, hope I made your day a little bit better and I'll see you you all next time.